I would like us to just pray with me while I'm going to just share the word that God placed on my heart. Rest bow over our heads and close our eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you because you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. And there is none like you. Father, we ask your Holy Spirit to minister to us. Teach us, lead us, guide us, and shape us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we just not become the listeners of the word, but the doers of the word. Thank you, dear Lord, in your presence, we ask your, your blessing over each one of us. Open our hearts, our, enlighten us, Lord, through your word, because your word is, is, is for us, is like a sharper than any double-edged sword, Lord. Thank you, dear Lord. We worship you, praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. So there is two video clips I also want to see you. Uh, Jordan, you have those two video clips? So you can maybe do it after uh, the, the sharing. Is fine? Okay, thank you. Hallelujah. If you have the Bible with you, please open with me from the book of Romans. Book of Romans chapter 1. book of Romans chapter 1 if you look at the book of Romans it's a very interesting book the sixth book of the New Testament Paul wrote is a we call it as the longest letter that Paul wrote and in that Paul had never been to Rome when he wrote this letter he had a desire to meet the church over there so he's writing this letter from the Greek city of Corinth and around about 57, 58, and the purpose or, or the message, the key truth, while Paul was introducing himself in the book of Romans, and there he is, the, the truth, the, the church that had been established there, Jews and Gentiles are sinners under God's judgment. Number two, both receive justification through faith alone, apart from works, Sanctification, which leads to glorification, takes place through dependence on the Holy Spirit. And the Jewish and Gentile Christian, Christians must learn to apply the gospel to practical living. So Paul was never been to Rome at this stage, but he had a desire to meet the church. So he introduced himself by writing this letter. And because this church was established in the unity with the, uh, the Greeks and the uh, the Jews. So it was a, like a Gentiles and the Jewish people together worship with a little different confusion. So Paul is writing this letter to just bring about the, the, the truth of the gospel and was to let the people know that salvation is by grace or by faith alone. So Romans chapter 1, chapter 1 and verse 14, he says, I am bound both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are at Rome. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Amen. So the title of the sermon is, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. Can we all can say, I am not ashamed of the gospel. So Paul is writing, you know, Paul, when his conversion, we look in the Bible, the, uh, in the book of Acts chapter 9, when he's on his way to Damascus to persecute more Christians, to persecute the people of God and how Jesus met on the road and he says, soul, soul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who is this Lord? Hey, I am Jesus. You are persecuting me. So one thing what we are encouraged to hear, uh, to listen that when the people of God are being persecuted, they are actually persecuting Jesus. So here Paul conversion took place and he gave his life to the Jesus Christ. His life took a U-turn and then now he's ready. He even went through different persecution. He was beaten. He was 
different in prisons different ways but now he has a desire to go to rome to preach the word and we must be thinking he's a crazy guy he already went through so many things and now he's going want to go again to rome maybe he's going to be persecuted but he says i am bound to greeks and non greeks i am i'm just in chains i'm just sold out for jesus christ i'm not ashamed of the gospel are we ashamed of the gospel you know sometimes we we do not give our testimonies to people we feel ah oh, it doesn't matter we all are christian we all worship the same god we all go to church and that's end of no i think you we need to understand that our testimony is so valuable and so worthwhile that if we give our testimony and we say i am not ashamed of the gospel and he says why i'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of god do we really believe in the bible i must let you know a testimony when i was a student here i it happened to be that lord laid upon my heart to give the bible to uh, uh, a lady and that she was holding a a, 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 a shop and this lady uh, with her husband and all they were working and lord led in my heart to give her the bible i was on my way to pakistan and i said to her say uh, uh, dear sister i brought a gift for you and he said what is that but that time she didn't know but i had like a friendship with her i used to go to that shop and she started to know this is a brother from pakistan and he is a christian and when i took the bible when, once god laid upon my heart i gave her the bible and i don't know what he's going to do but i let you know the power of the word he took the bible from my hand i left her gave the bible her husband was out on lunch break she was alone at the shop and she was she and i was looking through the glass window what she's going to she going to throw the the bible away but i let you know the power of the word of god she took the bible and i left her she took the bible from my hand and she started to page through and she started to page through and then also i happened to be again to her shop and she said to me you know anil i was waiting for a long time that somebody will give me the bible i didn't convert her i didn't do anything i didn't preach to her i just gave a gift of the bible so what i'm saying sharing with you even if you take the bible and give to any person in your streets you do not know what god is going to do with that person just trust in the word and trust in the holy spirit so we do evangelism in pakistan share the gospel we are not ashamed of the word they know we are christian i have a church there i have the bible college there they know i am a christian person we have a christian family my children are christian but we are sold out for jesus christ we know as apostle paul says i no longer live but christ lives in me so with that paul says i am not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of god we need to study the word daily we need to pray daily study for the salvation of everyone so it's just the power of god for the salvation of everyone and with that i want to remind you any another scripture from the book of hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says and without faith it is impossible to please god because any one who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him so we must believe when we come into the presence of the bible remind us we are two or three present in his name his presence is there amen we believe that he exists we believe in his miraculous powers we believe in the word of god so apostle paul totally sold out i am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of god for the salvation of everyone who believes first for the jew and then for the gentile and the righteous will live by faith if you look at the chapter the, the hebrew chapter 11 it talks about the men and the women of faith so we need to ask god please god help us we want to trust you we want to b- believe in your word and you know the more we read the word the more we study the meditate on the word the word become alive in us we start to live we start to experience god's miracles another miracle happened in our family my mother she was diagnosed with a heart problem heart disease and the doctors a muslim doctor said 
uh, her name is Josephine, Mrs. Uh, William, Mrs. Josephine, that your heart is damaged and is going to cost you a lot of money to get all the surgery and bypass and all this because your heart, your valves is, bro is, is blocked, it's not working. So she came to home, she spoke to me and it's okay, let's trust the Lord. That time I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ and I asked my friends, he said, let's trust the Lord. Let's ask the Lord because his name is Jehovah Rapha. Let's ask the Lord to heal my mother. And we started to pray on our knees. A couple of guys, we came together in our small house and we were praying and we were praying. We were interceding for my mother, trusting the word, knowing that Jesus is our healer. And when we were praying, God showed me a vision. In that vision, what I experienced, what I saw, a big operation theater. In that big operation theater, I saw different body parts were lying there. And then what they did, they took my mother on a stretcher into the ICU in the operation theater. And looking at through this vision, and I saw a man with a white robe with a golden hair. Immediately, saw oh, was Jesus. And Jesus came to my mom and he took the old heart and it replaced it with a new one. And, the, and the, then the vision disappeared. And the joy of the Lord burst on me. And when the vision disappeared, my friends were praying and I said, guys, listen, we do not want any more. There is no, now, we are not requesting for healing anymore because Jesus healed my mother. And then... Then my mother, I say, Mom, now you go to the doctor next, next, uh, the next morning because I am a guy who wants to see the results. <laughs> I say, you better go to the doctor tomorrow morning. I, I'm, I'm trusting the Lord is done. I want to see the evidence. I want to see the reports, the new reports. So my mother went to the doctor and the doctor was Muslim. They took out the new reports and now he's, he was checking the old and the new reports. And then he looked into my mother's eye and say. Mrs. William or Josephine, where were you? She said, what do you mean, doctor? He said, because your new report shows your heart is working perfectly. There is no problem in your heart. The walls are working. I don't know what happened to you, but there is no need for any operation. You are okay. You are good. So my mother, <laughs> my mother gave the testimony that I'm a Christian, of course, with my name, Josephine, and then my Jesus healed me. So she was not ashamed to share the word or share the testimony that I'm a Christian. So you know, as is so true in Pakistan, it's not easy for us to go out, uh, but we still go out and make disciples. We still go out and share the word. We are not ashamed of the gospel. As the Bible also reminds us, Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, it says, salvation is found in no one else. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. So if there is no other way, as Jesus says, says that I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. If we all believe that Jesus is the only way, that we must not be ashamed of to share Jesus. Because there is no other way. I live in that hostile nation, that hostile environment where there is so many things, so many sacrifices that nation, the people offers daily or sometimes especially in their festivals, it goes like crazy. You look at the, the bulls, the, the, the different animals, how they sacrifice, they offer prayers five times a day to their God in that hostile nation. But we know there are different religions around the world and they all are, are the, the false religion. We have the religion. It's not actually the religion because Jesus did not come to start a religion. Jesus came to give us life and eternal life. So that's why we are not ashamed of the gospel. So as Jesus said that I am the door. Yes, he's the only door. There's no other door. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Yes, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the alpha and the omega. The beginning and the end. So if everything is Jesus, then why we are ashamed of the gospel? We must not be ashamed of the gospel. And the, you know the word salvation? In the Greek language, it has wonderful three meanings that attach to this word. The word 
that's been used in Greek language for salvation is sozo. And sozo means saved, healed, and delivered. Saved, healed, and delivered. It's like a whole package God gave us to us. That's why salvation is found in no other. I feel so proud, you know, when I preach the gospel in Pakistan, when I get the permission, I go crazy and speaking in through my, of course, my language is Urdu. So uh, it's very difficult sometimes to preach in English, but I do my, I try to do my best because my language is Urdu. I preach in Urdu language in Pakistan. But I let you know when I preach the gospel, the spirit of the Lord falls upon me. The spirit leads me in a, in a different directions. And I experience so many miracles, signs and wonders while we're just sharing the word. Sometimes we are not even praying the, for the people when people enter the congregation and enter in that tent meeting just through the worship, the praise and worship and just by sharing the word people are getting healed. People are getting saved. People are getting delivered. So remember the word sozo in the Greek language used for salvation. It means that we are saved. It's done. Amen. We are healed because of the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. Amen? And we are delivered from all the oppression and all the demon possessions. We are free indeed because of Jesus. So thank God for that. But now my question is, if I am not ashamed of the gospel, then I must bear fruit in the kingdom. I must testify. Because if I'm not ashamed, if I'm ashamed, I will never bear fruit for king, in the kingdom. If I'm ashamed of Jesus, I'm not share. And I'm not even, I will be uh, just uh, reluctant not, not to share with anybody. I will be not satisfied or maybe because I'm, uh, I'm ashamed of, the, of the Jesus, ashamed of the gospel. But I let you know, if we are not ashamed of the gospel, then what are we doing next? If we are not making disciples, I give you a key verse. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. We call it Great Commission. From verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and it surely I am with you always to the very end of age. We do understand this is the Great Commission. It's why it's called not just the Commission but it's called Great Commission. It's the Commission that Jesus on his way up to heaven and he spoke to his disciples that all authority, not smaller, few portion of authority, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore go. Does it say therefore sit? Thank God it says go. <laughs> Amen. What it says? Go and make disciples. It means this is the responsibility of the church. John Piper says one of the great missionary uh, evangelists, he says go send or disobey. Either we go or we don't go. Go send or send somebody to do the work of the Lord. Support that missionary. Support that person. Support that project. Go send or disobey. Sadly some churches are not. They hear the word. They know the great commission. But they are not following. But if you look at the ministry of Jesus Christ in the book of Acts. Right in the beginning. He say Jesus right in the beginning start to do and to preach the gospel. He was a doer. Apostle Paul was a doer. If you are not doer of the word, then it's not complete gospel. All authority has been given to us. Therefore, go and make disciples. This is interesting when I, I share in some places. I said no, the gospel of, uh, after the gospel, the four gospels, and then we have the book of Acts. Book of Acts is actually the book, the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of the Holy Spirit. What the Lord is doing. If there is no book of Acts, we didn't know what happened with Jesus. He went up to the heaven and all these things. So thank God for the gospel and after the gospel, the book of Acts. And I asked the people, you know, the book of Acts is very interesting because we all are part of the book of Acts. Where Jesus also reminded the people, Acts 1-8, but you will receive power. 
when the holy spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses where only in jerusalem no 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 you will be my witnesses in jerusalem in all judea samaria and to the ends of the earth and you know the book of acts you can understand in three words amen you know the book of acts <laughs> i can tell you you can learn about the book of acts only in three words you want to know how <laughs> the first word is up the second word is down and the third word is out this is the book of acts and you say brother how is that <laughs> jesus went up holy spirit came down and disciples went out the simple we understand jesus went up holy spirit came down and we replace it not out but in we need to understand the book of acts we are part of the book we even disciple didn't ashamed of the gospel we can learn their stories how they were persecuted while sharing declaring the message even they were like especially paul and silas in the book of acts chapter 16 and they were just beaten and bleeded and how they were put in the inner cell and they were uh, the jailers they were, it was ordered these are dangerous guys they are making all city uproar and this all thing i must let you know where the work of the holy spirit happens things happen starts to happen shaking came place the earthquakes the spiritual earthquakes amen when the then the gospel is preached so these two guys paul and silas bleeding but in the middle of the night if you read their scripture they were not complaining they were say oh lord i supposed to be in that big convention big crowd is waiting for me i need to preach the gospel there you know in the middle of the night paul and silas they were praying and worshiping the lord and that's a witness to the other prisoners and when they were praising and worshiping the lord i must let you know there is a power in praise and worship amen there is a power in the prayer of when you pray to the lord there is a power there is there's, there's something happens when you start to pray and these two guys witnessing in the prison cell praising and worshiping the lord they don't care if we die we die we know we will be in with the lord so they don't care with their lives and they were praising and worshiping the lord they are praying and you know the story how the spirit of the lord comes the earthquake comes the uh, how the chains the all the prisoners even they were unchained because the spirit did the job and the angel of the lord appeared how these things happen and they give witness to this jailer he says sir what must i do to be saved he said don't need to do anything <laughs> you just need to believe in the lord jesus christ you don't need to do you know all other religion if you look at the all other religion tells you do something for your god offer some sacrifice do this do that then you will be saved the only religion if i say christianity you do not need to do anything because the righteous will live by faith no other word the righteous will live by faith and here is the word go send or disobey the message if you look at the in the gospel of matthew when the first disciple jesus called matthew chapter 4 verse 17 from that time on jesus began to preach repent for the kingdom of heaven is near this is the ever message has been preached by jesus the message of kingdom the message of discipleship the message to reach the world and when he called his disciples verse 18 as jesus was walking beside the sea of galilee he saw two brothers simon called peter and his brother andrew they were casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen come follow me jesus said and i will make you fishers of men at once they left their nets and followed him going on from there he saw two other brothers james son of zebedee and his brother john they were in a boat with their father zebedee preparing their nets jesus called them and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him jesus called these two brothers 
in their workplace just let you know god can speak to us even in sitting in the church but we must not underestimate god's god is not limited god is unlimited these two guys and the other two brothers they were working normal job fishers fi- uh, fishermen uh, the fishermen that, that's like ordinary people but god spoke there so god can speak to anybody in their workplace maybe you are driving a car god is speaking to you you are doing gym god is speaking to you you doing your business god is speaking to you different ways god is not limited he is unlimited we need to be just tuned our ears to hear the voice of the lord and hear the two disciples jesus said come come follow me i will do something to you i will shape you make you mold you prepare you then you will become the fisher of men you will be different personalities as today you're listening this sermon this sharing maybe god is speaking to you come follow me i will do something for you first you need to come first you need to come under the obedience of the holy spirit when i listen the voice of the lord god says come i took a u turn i was on my way to become a police officer I said no 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 you thinking of police officer i want to be, uh, i want to make you a journal in the kingdom a journal in the kingdom so sometimes we think little sometimes we see little sometimes our vision is too short but let's think of god the god is almighty god is above all and he is powerful he can do big things even what we can think and imagine and see because he is almighty so god chose people that's why these people they went out they preached the gospel they were not ashamed of the word they were not ashamed of the gospel and i want to encourage you as well a one of the scripture from the gospel of john gospel of john chapter 15 and verse 14 you are my friends if you do what i command i no longer call you servants hallelujah jesus didn't call us servants he called us his friends because a servant does not know his master's business instead i have called you friends for everything that i learned from my father i have made known to you you did not choose me you know sometimes we think that we chose god no 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 you did not choose me but i chose you and appointed you for what to go and bear fruit fruit that will last then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name this is my command love each other so jesus calls us friends he said i am not calling you servants because servant doesn't know what the master business is but the friends knows i call you friends because you know my father's business my father's business is to go and make disciples my father business is to reach the world my father business because the world is dying without jesus so you are in father's business i am in father's business we all in a father's business in our environment in our surroundings and we can make a difference because he also calls us you are the light of the world you are the salt of the earth so he called us friend because the friend knows the father's business and he said that you did not choose me i chose you amen we can be like uh, have excuses like moses a hey lord this is a wrong number <laughs> i don't know how to speak i'm not a good speaker send somebody else god say you don't understand i am god i take out of nothing and make something special i do something special for you and you know how god used that person same with jeremiah the prophet the first chapter i have chosen you even you were came in this world so god knew us before even we came in this world but we need to follow and discover our calling and we must remember that we must not be ashamed of the gospel wherever you go now the application is even in your surrounding in this free country please take time just give bible to somebody just pray for somebody just know that the power there is a power in the gospel there is a power when you speak jesus because the name of jesus is meaning the salvation 
There's a power in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. There's a power in the word of God. When we just share the word, things start to happen. Don't worry about the end results. You take the first step by faith because the righteous will live by faith. I want to share the last scripture with you from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 9. Gospel of Matthew in chapter 9, verse 35. Jesus went through all the towns. You know, Jesus was a busy guy. <laughs> he went all the towns. Not one town, not one city. So he is a mover and shaker. This is Jesus. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues. So he was present in a synagogue in the church, but also out of the church. Preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. It's so true. Jesus went through all the towns, all the villages, not in, in synagogues only, but he went out and shared, bear witness. And then when he saw the crowd preaching, teaching, healing, that was a part of Jesus' ministry. Preaching, teaching, healing. And with that, when he saw the crowd, he had compassion. That's a great big word, compassion. If we don't have compassion for nations, we are missing out. <laughs> Because God is interested in nations. If we are not interested in nations, we are missing a big part of the gospel. Because the Bible reminds us that none should perish. I'll come to, uh, to the stage of repentance. Jesus had compassion for people. You know, when I had this hatred in me for Muslims and all this, I did not have compassion for them. I didn't like them. <laughs> But God changed my heart. He did a big surgery over my heart. A surgery of the cross. A surgery of the, the cross. He took this, the heart that was stoning and hate, and didn't like the other people, and then he replaced it with a new heart. The heart who loves nations. The heart who loves all colors. The heart who loves Muslims. Compassion. Ask the Lord, please, Lord, give us compassion. We are lack compassion, then we can pray. Lord, please give me the compassion. I would start to pray for other people. I would start to pray for other nation. Even for this missionary family, Brother Anil and his family, I would start to pray for their family. What they are doing in the country like Pakistan. Because the Bible reminds us, the harvest is plentiful. People are hungry for the gospel. They want to know the truth. And the truth is only the Lord Jesus Christ. The truth is only the Bible. There is no other book. There is no other God. There is only one God. Jesus Christ. There is no other way. The harvest is plentiful. But the workers are few. You know when we start to see missions as the heart of God. Our church will start to grow. We even from our church. We support different missionaries from our local church. We send out in different northern part of Pakistan. Where there is no church. Not a single believer, not a single Christian in that side, in that area. But with our short or the small resources, we still send out. We say, just go and preach the gospel. We go ourselves. Like Jesus, he also went out. His disciples went out. Apostle Pen, uh, 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 Paul went out. He, we can do the same. We can send out. We can pray. And we can ask God, please God help us. To understand the great commission. And when we do this. Then we say then I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am sold out. You know my family. We, there are risks. There are threats. There are different things. Challenges that we go through in Pakistan. But we know this is part of our calling. Part of our living. I told my children. I want all my children become missionaries. I pray for them. My uh, wife Rebecca. She prays for them. These children. Lord these are your children. It's not our children. I do not want them to become other, you know, professional of doctor and this and that. No, no, no. I want they will become your servants. Missionaries to reach the world 
with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed of the gospel and I believe you are not also ashamed of the gospel. May God bless all of you. Thank you, Pastor Zegi. God bless you. Thank you.